Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NHL slate for this Black Friday, November 25th. Really, really nice uh, seven, eight game slate tonight. Um, they actually had an early slate as well, which we did not cover. Um, note the semi late start time of 8 p.m. So I'm going to actually have to try to uh, remember to uh, update the goalies and the sheets and all that stuff as close to lock as possible. But uh, not exactly sure what my schedule is going to be. Just do the best that you can. And again, I'm going to, whenever I do a video, until I figure out a better way to do it, I am going to show my uh, my sheets here. And again, for those of you that are watching this for the first time, this is uh, these are the actual sheets that I put on for premium members on TrueDFS.com, where we rank them by, you know, all different metrics, by, by fantasy points, by points per dollar, and also by my proprietary sheets value score, which uh, I think is one of the best ways to combine both uh, both point per dollar rankings and just general fantasy point rankings. I think the sheets value score is, is a pretty good base uh, of projection uh, rankings. Now, again, this does not build lineups for you. This just kind of ranks the players. So how, how you go ahead and build your lineups, it really depends on how you, you like to build. In other words, uh, if you, play few enough lineups where you want to hand build and just kind of visualize it and just kind of pick your players. That's kind of one way to, that's one way to attack it. Another is to kind of use a, a use SaberSim to build or another optimizer or whatever, but use SaberSim to build lineups uh, for you given uh, your projection based uh, inputs, um, whether it be from TrueDFS, from SaberSim, from Rotogradish, from wherever, to have Saber Sim go ahead and build lineups for you. And in hockey, I have to say that they do a pretty good job of kind of capturing all that correlation that you need in hockey lineups. Um, hockey being a sport where, you know, one guy's fantasy results just impact the others quite dramatically because of assists and, and all that stuff. So um, we're going to approach it again two ways. We're going to first uh, kind of hand build. And then we're going to pull up SaberSim and kind of see if SaberSim leads us to a similar type of outcome. So the first thing I like to do again is I just like to eyeball this with the goal being to try to, you know, find players that are on the same team because you want to stack them. And then you also want to, in a perfect world, find players that are on the same line. Now I just started the first time today adding an input. As you can see it's not even complete yet. That's why so many things are missing, but I'm adding a, a column where I, I cite what even strength line the player rates to be on and also what power play line he or she uh, rates to be on. Um, and that's a good way to kind of sanity check to make sure that the guys you're playing are going to be on the same lines. Again, it's just literally just, I just put this column in about 20 minutes ago. Um, and we're going to test it uh, throughout the course of the day to make sure that these numbers populate right, right now. They're, they're just not, but well, it's not, they're not populated. I just don't have the, the lines yet. So we'll see the best way to handle this, but it is now going to be part of the true DFS sheets. Um, one thing I'd like to do kind of right off the bat, and this is kind of what I recommend, is you want to pick your cheapest goalie that ranks really well. I, I feel as though paying up for goalie is usually not the best idea. So if you can just, again, focus on getting the cheapest goalie that rates well, or I guess a better way to describe it is the highest rating cheap highest rated cheap goalie um that's a good start and you'll see that although Sorokin rates to be the top overall play Grubauer is pretty close and he's much cheaper so we're gonna start by putting Grubauer in okay now the next thing I like to do is I like to look and see you know if there's any kind of clusters of players in the top 20 um or so players here. So I'll even just, you know, you can you eyeball it obviously, or you can just kind of do this. And 
top player on the slate is an Islander. And then there's one, two, three other Islanders in the top 20. So right off the bat, this looks to be the way you want to go. Uh, the next thing you notice is that you have two LA Kings here in the top five. So that's something interesting. Um, so it looks as though those would be the two key stacks to build from. But then just for fun, I like to look down a little bit and see if there's a big glut here. And I do see that a bunch of Vegas guys are at least, maybe they're not in the top five or whatever, but they're in the top 20 at least. And so that would probably be my next best um, stack. So instinctively, that's where I think I would probably go. I'd probably go to the Islanders, probably go to Vegas, um, and probably go to LA. And let's so let's just see what that would look like from a, from a hand built perspective. Um, so let's look at the Islanders. Let's, let's just throw these guys in and see what they look like. So um, we could even highlight the Islanders here. So Pagal, and then. Barzal, and then Wallstrom, and then Beauvillier, and we can even go down here to Pulak. Now, what you notice is that this is super duper cheap. You know, these Islanders, if you want to make like a full five man stack, I mean, for example, it costs you almost nothing. So you can go ahead then and play all kinds of studs and fill out, you know, your stacks with, you know, with high price guys, if that's what you want to do. Um, and likewise, what this also means is that if you want to build your stacks around other high priced, high priced teams, then you could use these Islander guys to kind of fill out the rest of your stacks. If you want to go four threes with someone else in the Islanders, then you can do that. Or if you want to make the Islanders a staple, you could do that. And the other thing I would go back to is this observation that even though he's not the cheapest, we have Sorokin is 8,400 and the best overall play of goalies. And here you get some correlation with your goalie, with your players. That being that if the team scores a lot and they win, then you get benefit for the win. I find that that correlation though is a little bit fraudulent not fraudulent. I mean, that does correlate, right? I mean, the more goals your team scores, the you know, the more better chance you have to win. That's that's great. But the the I don't want to say the majority, but a good amount of the equity from from being a goalie doesn't necessarily come from the win. It comes from getting a lot of shots fired on you that you get the chance to save. Um, so it's if you it's not exactly the greatest to have the goalies with your players because if the goalies are you know are just waiting while your team just scores a bunch then you're not able to get any saves right um what you could do you could correlate your goalies with your defensemen right because part of the way defensemen gets their um their points is from just blocking shots so if there's more shots coming through it's either going to get blocked maybe by the defenseman or saved by the goalie. So that's, that's, that's another way you could think about it. But so I would still probably go back to that original idea at goalie of having Grubauer, even though, you know, it certainly correlates to play, um, to play, um, to play Sorokin. Okay. Let's see what these other stacks that we talked about would kind of look like. Um, let's go back to, the LA Kings. That would be Adrian Hem. Wait, so what I want to do again, let's all the way at the end of the end of the slate. I love it. Adrian Kemp, 4,900, put him in. Then you have Kevin Fiala, 5,600. The only thing is that I don't see anybody else on the LA side that really rates even in the top 50 or 30. So I don't think it's the best idea to stack too many. Listen, if, if you had three good players and, you know, projection wise, and it's just a matter of filling it out with two guys, then you could take a little bit of projection hit in the name of correlation, all that stuff. But if you only had two guys, I would probably, you know what I could do though? You could play these guys either as one-offs 
or as part of five twos if in fact they were in the same line. So even though you can't like pull, pull a full four or five man stack out of LA, I think you could use these two guys either as one offs or as I just said, um, in, a, in a little two man to make that work. So um, I would just probably leave this kind of just like this. Um, and the other team that we talked about was was Vegas, right? So let, let's go ahead and fill that in. Um, let's see what the Vegas guys look like. So here we're talking about, I presume, Eichel. See, here's like one of the more expensive guys. You have Eichel, then you have Stone, and then you have Logan Thompson. Oh, he's a goalie, sorry. Yeah, so not really too much. So it's really just Eichel and Stone. So again, these could be kind of really more expensive two-offs. So it looks as though, again, from a stack perspective, that there's really, there's three ways to go as far as I'm concerned. You could, you could jam in all these Islanders and then use these kind of expensive one-offs or two-offs, so to speak. Or you could just use the Islanders to kind of fill in Maybe maybe a uh, Vegas, you know what I mean? Even though you only have two guys from Vegas that project all that well, you could add in the rest of them, which would probably be March Assault and and you know we had Stone, right? Put Stone in there, and then and then who usually gets in the, in there? Some Shea Theodore, whoever it is, and then you can use the Islander guys to kind of fill in the rest of us really really easily. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is 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 instead of doing hand build, we're gonna go to Saber Sim. And we're going to then see uh, if the lineups that are created from SaberSim using my projections come up with the same types of things we would imagine should happen. Um, and sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. Let's take a look. So we're going to upload from, well, I'm uploading from my own local file, but you could do it however you want. Oh, wait, I'm in the wrong slate. Sorry about that. Yeah, this is the early slate. Not bad. Okay. A couple of guys are out. We don't care about that right now. So let's build just for example, for example, 150 lineups to see. And let's just see what they would look like. Let's see, drum roll. E look at that. Yeah, okay. So it does have a bunch of islanders. But it's getting up to these these Dallas guys a little bit more. So we'll take a look and see what kind of, of team stacks you get. Yeah, Islanders, Vegas. Didn't really get too much of the Kings, but yeah, so it agrees. Uh, Saberson agrees that the Islanders are going to be a good part of, of decent upside lineups. So I, I do like to do it this way to kind of confirm before I go ahead and play either way that the, that the two kind of methodologies match, you know, and, and that's usually the sign that you're you're onto something strong. So Islanders, Vegas, those would be the uh, the key teams for me tonight. Uh, that's it. Good luck, everybody. I, I'm going to go live, but probably not in time for the hockey. I'll go over some of the stuff in there, but um, when I go through the you know when I do the live NBA stream, but uh, there's going to be some changes in lines probably afterwards that won't get factored in. But again, more process than anything else. Hopefully, you learn something, uh, whether it be to attack how to how to attack this slate um, or other slates in the future. Good luck.